Breaking tonight, one of America's best allies standing on the brink of all-out war. And the president is once again at a fundraiser. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megyn Kelly. It is 4 a.m. in Tel Aviv, but no one is sleeping easy. We've now seen 24 hours of Hamas rocket attacks almost constantly raining down on Israel, our closest ally in the Middle East. We have been watching Israel, Israeli media sites all night as reports of new attacks on Israel flash literally every five to ten minutes or faster. Israeli airstrikes have been hitting Gaza for hours in response. So far today, no casualties reported on the Israeli side. That is due in large part to its Iron Dome missile defense system, which is taking out those rockets one by one in dramatic scenes just like this one. Watch. At this point last night, nearly half of Israel's total population was hiding in bomb shelters, nearly half, and things have not improved much since then. The explosions hitting so close to home that average Israelis are now capturing the Iron Dome intercepts on their iPhones. And after all this, we got a report just a short while ago quoting a top Israeli official saying a ground invasion could come at any moment with some 40,000 reservists ready to march into Gaza. So with Iraq, now an Islamic state, Syria in a full-blown civil war, and our own president's efforts on a peace process between Israel and Palestine clearly a failure, where is the United States in all of this? Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee just got back from Israel a couple of weeks ago. He joins us from Little Rock tonight. Governor, where is the United States and where is our president? Well, the president is raising funds for the Democratic Party. What he needs to be doing is dispatching both the defense secretary and particularly the secretary of state uh, to Israel and to make public statements, the president himself, saying that because Hamas is nothing more than a puppet of Iran, that the United States supports Israel fully in doing whatever it has to do to shut down these rocket attacks. Megan, I've been to Storo and all over the southern part of Israel. I've stood and seen 4,200 Katusha rockets piled up behind the police station. America would never tolerate what the Israelis have been asked, not just to tolerate, but to accept and give land away for. It is absurd. And we need to suggest to the world that they back off, let Israel put Hamas out of business once and for all, do whatever it takes, including a ground operation, in Gaza and stop this nonsense because it's escalating out of control and nobody wins this uh, except terrorism. What the president has done, uh, you know, before he went off to the fundraisers, is he wrote an op-ed. He wrote an op-ed, Governor Huckabee, in a, in a in Haaretz, an Israeli paper, uh, in which he offered strong praise for the Palestinian president and said little about the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, on the very same day, a top White House advisor made some blistering comments about Israel during a speech in Tel Aviv, uh, call, talking about its occupation of the West Bank being wrong, leading to regional instability, the dehumanization of Palestinians, and so on. And the administration has come under fire not only for not standing firmly with Israel here, but, but the entire region is in chaos, Governor, the entire region. You know, Megan, it's embarrassing to see that our policy has degenerated into something that might as well be, let's all put our arms around Hamas and welcome them to the international family. This is a terrorist organization. Our own State Department says it's a terrorist organization. Uh, the fact that the Palestinians have now embraced Hamas as part of a unity government, what we ought to be saying, instead of praising the Palestinians, we ought to be saying, if the Palestinians continue to have a partnership with Hamas, they've seen their last American dollar of support. Furthermore, we would encourage the Israelis to build all of the neighborhoods they can in Judea and Samaria, and we would just say that it's time to uh, quit fantasizing about a two-state solution that is no solution whatsoever to peace, 
and to make it clear that terrorism has no place in Israel or the rest of the Middle East. This is not something that the United States can be timid about. We've got to be bold. We've got to be clear. We're either for freedom or we're for terrorism. We need to make up our minds what we're for. President Obama in the past has repeatedly said uh, that we stand shoulder sh to shoulder with Israel, uh, that you know we will back our partner Israel, and so on and so forth. I mean, the chips apparently are down. Uh, they're talking about 40,000 troops possibly invading in a ground action. I mean, they appear to be at war tonight, Governor. What should we be doing? I mean, what the American public certainly doesn't likely have the stomach for actual military involvement, and yet the question is, this is our closest ally. This is one of our only allies in a region that's falling apart. We need a friend over there, a strong one. We need a friend, but I'll tell you, Israel needs a friend. They don't have any. Uh, they're being under pressure from uh, the Europeans over this ridiculous boycott, divestiture, and sanction movement, which is absurd. What we need to be doing is having a president who will call every leader uh, in NATO, every leader throughout the world and the superpowers, and say, be very clear, we're going to stand with Israel. You better not get involved, because we're involved. We're going to be with them, whatever it takes for them uh, to be able to protect themselves. And Megan, a lot of people I don't think understand that Israel is not fighting for a little strip of real estate here. They're not fighting for additional rights of the Jordan River. They're fighting for their very existence. They have a tiny little sliver of land about the size of New Jersey. Their piece of real estate in all the Middle East is tiny. I've stood in places in the Golan Heights where just a few hundred meters to one side, you're looking into Syria, and a few hundred meters to the north, you're looking into Lebanon. They are surrounded by enemies. They're yeah. not surrounded by buffers. And that's why we have to be very clear that we will stand with them without equivocation. Yeah. We haven't done that, and it's time we do. And former Ambassador Dan Gillerman always says we live in a very dangerous neighborhood. Governor Mike Huckabee, yes. thanks for being here. Thank you, Megan. Great to be with you. Well, while the State Department earlier called for both sides to stand down in the Middle East, we did not hear anything directly from the president today. He is actually in Texas tonight, and we have live pictures from Dallas, where he is raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Democratic Party at two private fundraisers. The president has been hounded with questions about why he would go to Dallas and Austin, which, you, as you may know, are in Texas, but not visit the border for a firsthand look at the crisis caused by the recent surge of illegal immigrants crossing. Instead, he attended a meeting with Governor Rick Perry and then called on Congress to pass immigration reform. There is a larger issue that I recognize involves a lot of politics, which is why aren't we passing comprehensive immigration reform, which would put an additional 20,000 uh, Border Patrol agents uh, and give us uh, a, a lot of additional uh, authorities to deal with some of these problems. One of the suggestions I had for Governor Perry was that uh, it would be useful for uh, my Republican friends to rediscover the concept of negotiation and compromise. A Texas Senator Ted Cruz will be here to respond to the president just ahead.